Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Terry from True Champion Gaming and today we are going to talk about the list that won our post ban list invitational tournament we did in our 24 hour stream. Um, it was piloted by none other than the one, the only Limelight. Um, some of you know him as Jason May from Australia and he played it very, very well, told me that it was pretty nostalgic. Uh, we're gonna talk about it and let's break right into it. So first off, we are going to jump into the material deck. We are playing a Spirit of Fire deck, and we are playing Lorraine. We go to Spirit Ruler. Um, one of the big things about Spirit Ruler, uh, especially now, post-ban, is we no longer have Avarice. So any way we can draw some extra cards by recurring like a Drawn Blade, or just get that added value by bringing a sword back in case they did destroy it with, you know, a Ruckin Acolyte or uh, Spurn to Ash or something like that, we get to bring it back, which lets us really push into our game plan. Um, we play four different swords here. Kinda straightforward. Um, sword of Seeking and Sword of Adversity are your free swords. Depending on the game state, when you do level up to Lorraine, there are some times you might wanna bring Adversity out, but typically, Sword of Seeking is just, you know, the tried and true sword, it does a great job. Drawn Blade in this list is specifically great because of what I told you uh, with Spirit Ruler. You can use your Drawn Blade early, swing with it, break it, and then when you go to level three, bring it back and draw a card, which is great. And Prismatic Edge to push that extra damage, to deal with Interceptors, with Taunts. It's everything we want in this deck. It's not so much, uh, you know, trying to chain these to draw a bunch of cards like we did with Avarice or things like that. It really just helps us. It's a three attack sword that once you see all of the spells that are available to us, you'll get it a little more about why that can be so strong. And then lastly, we have Terrafring to help us against those very fast aggro decks or just to kind of win the tempo match if we are in a situation where we need our opponent to not swing for a turn. Smoke Bombs might be the most important <laughs> card out of our sideboard, or not sideboard, sorry, material deck, because we are swinging a lot with our face, with swords, with attack cards, that's the name of this deck. Um, and when we're doing that, if there is some form of taunt, some form of uh, interceptor on the board that we just don't have the damage to deal with and then hit them for a bunch, potentially winning the game. Smoke Bombs gets to come in, give stealth to that Interceptor or that Taunt, which because we don't have True Sight, it is not a legal target for us to swing at, right? So we can Smoke Bombs their Interceptor and then use our Prismatic Edge plus some Pump Spells to swing for a lot of damage. Very strong interaction there. Um, and then our last two are gonna be Grand Crusader's Ring and Majestic Spirit's Crest, which in this deck, Grand Crusader Ring, obviously we know what we're doing there. We're drawing cards, that's what we want. We wanna keep our hand healthy and able to combo out and kill our opponent. And then Majestic Spirit Crest in this deck is kind of a Grand Crusader Ring on steroids. We swing almost every turn, so we're gonna be swinging. We're going to draw a card because once you banish this, your champion gains on attack, draw a card. And there's gonna be times where we swing more than once in a turn and draw multiple. So, really, really cool stuff. Let's jump right into the list here. We're gonna start with the spells. So, um, starting with one of our defensive spells, we play two resolute stands in the main. Sometimes you just need to live a little bit longer to finish off your opponent. Resolute stand, being able to play it for free if we need to, or to put three cards down. Maybe we're gonna use that to level up and get into a, an advantageous situation, so we can put three cards down if we're not you know, heavy on floating memory that game, and then utilize those to level up, but also just to stay alive against uh, all the swarm decks and go wide strategies that have been so popular, uh, Resolute Stand really does shine. And you never know when you might play against an Onsoul either, and that card's very good against them. Um, our first pump spell, Hone by Fire. This was a new card that I underestimated in our review back at the beginning of this set. In this deck particularly, Home by Fire is insanely powerful. Being able to give one of our sword weapons plus two attack and add a durability counter to it is very, very strong. Especially if we're gonna swing twice in that turn, which we'll get there once we get to the crux package. But it's also so strong early because even if we're not level two and getting that Lorraine buff, 
this gives us a pseudo Lorraine buff if we use this before recollection, and then we can flame sweep for a decent amount, you know, utilizing a sword. Um, with adversity, with no allies out, honed by fire on level one with a flame sweep, you're swinging for five. So pretty sweet to be able to sweep early if we need to against those swarm strategies or just ally strategies in general. And then two of the uh, old faithfuls, all the reliable here, Cremation Ritual and Creative Shock. These are eight cards that you see in most fire decks. Um, <laughs> we basically build our deck around these so that we can continuously cycle through our deck, draw cards we need, and put ourselves in situations to win the game. Don't need to talk about them much. And then, just to add Lady Luck to the mixture, we like to play one Blazing Throw because you never know when this card will come up. You're in a situation where you swung through. Um, you just need to do a little bit of extra damage and you have that sword that you brought back and it has a bunch of extra durability from Spirit Ruler. Well, Blazing Throw, boom, four upstairs. Uh, it's also an action, so you can dodge Spell Shroud with this, which is relevant. And you can also use it early to kill pesky allies like an Ace and Protector or a Guildless or something along those lines. So pretty strong, great spell. Next, we're gonna talk about our floating memory, which I'm just gonna throw them all out here and talk about them at once because there's nothing too crazy going on here. Um, Savage Slash, great for removal early. It's also another attack card that we utilize constantly, maybe um, you know, late game when we wanna swing twice in the same turn, we can swing first with like a Savage Slash with our Prismatic that's been honed. Now we're swinging for seven damage and then potentially swinging again and utilizing maybe just the Prismatic or another attack card. It's a cheap attack card that also can be discarded um, or utilize this floating memory to help us level up or get a drawn blade out. Stalwart Shieldmate slows down our aggressive opponents. It's a great target for our cremation rituals. It's proved itself already pre-ban and post-ban to be a very, very solid floating memory because it's a 0-2 taunt that has to be killed. It's not something that they can ignore like a honorary vanguard or something like that. They, they if they want to swing at you, they have to kill the shield mate. Or else, another reason is we can just sack it away with one of our other cards and draw. And then lastly, Tempered Steel, which it doesn't come up very often, but every now and then, you might actually use Tempered Steel late game for that one extra durability counter to do a bigger double swing. But most of the time, you're just ditching this with a Hasty Messenger or a Cremation, or not Cremation, sorry, a um, Creative Shock to get rid of. So there's our floating memory. Now let's talk about the allies. So Dungeon Guide, obviously. Great card, we're going to level three Crux. Um, our end game really does pick up when we get to Crux. We can 100% win the game without going to Crux if we need to, but Crux just makes us stronger, it gives us more health, and it also gives us that added value of being able to bring back a sword. So Dungeon Guide lets us do that at a discounted rate and a little quicker. Hasty Messenger. Um, just another red staple. Um, it lets us attack, cycle, and when we attack, we can discard a card, and if we do, we draw a card. So we get rid of those floating memory we want in the yard, and hopefully draw into more gas so that we can end the game. Um, Hasty Messenger. Uh, then lastly, I've got Flame Swordsman, Flame Rune Swords, which is another form of floating memory, but this one also does, it, it has to attack, which is relevant. So every now and then we can put a little beat down with Flame Rune Swordsman or use this card to kill a Swift Recruit or a Shield Mate and then able to go face. So this is kind of more on the ally side, but it is still a very good target to Creative Shock or to Cremation Ritual even and get into our yard. And then of course, no sword attack deck would be complete without Galachad, Galahad Court Knight, a uh, really cool card. He's a 1-4 for 4 norm, unique ally, warrior human. Um, his class bonus is Galahad can attack using sword weapons you control. So Galahad in this deck is going to be basically the fifth of a crux card that I will introduce very, very shortly. But uh, Galahad, he, he, he does a little less efficiently what we want to be doing in this deck, but he does let you get that second sword swing. So, plus it's just spicy and cool to have one of him in your deck. <laughs> now we're gonna talk about the meat and potatoes, our attack cards. And the first two I'm gonna show you are Fiery Momentum and Devastating Blow. So Fiery Momentum, 
is a three drop, two damage attack, warrior sword. Fiery Momentum gets plus one attack for each fire element card in your graveyard. So with this deck, we're Cremation Ritualing, we're Creative Shocking, we're Blazing Throwing, we're, we're putting a ton of fire cards into our graveyard. And for each one we do, we get an added attack with this Fiery Momentum. So even if we aren't turbo putting cards into our yard, Fire Room Momentum late game is a scary card that they have to respect at all times. Um, at worst, it is just a two damage attack, but if they do not have Graveyard Hate, they're not playing Nullifying Lantern, this card can swing for a ton of damage. Devastating Blow is just a solid, solid attack. It's got level three plus, it gets plus four attack. Currently without its bonus, it is a three cost, three damage attack. But in this deck, usually when we're utilizing Devastating Blow, we're doing it in a combination. One of my favorite combinations to do with this is to play a Prismatic Edge, reveal a fire, ping my opponent for three, and then hone my Prismatic, go to my turn, drop this Devastating Blow, and then swing for 12 with my Devastating Blow, including my Prismatic. And then I did 15 damage that turn. So if I have a way to untap and swing again, we're doing 20 damage in one turn or ba blazing throw, it's up to 19. So there are some big swings that you can do utilizing Devastating Blow. Now, probably the most important attack currently um, with Swarm Lorraines running around and a lot of different iterations of ally decks is Flame Sweep. And our deck gets the privilege of playing four Flame Sweeps, with, which currently, in my opinion, is the best sweep in the game currently. Um, if you have access to this, you have access to level two class bonus with Warrior. This gets an added attack, so by itself, it's a, gonna be a two attack. And then once we add swords, once we add a Lorraine level two bonus, we're swinging for a ton of damage and killing an entire board. This teamed up with our level two Lorraine lets us draw cards forever. And if we are able to hit an ally deck with a flame sweep and kill three plus allies and draw three plus cards, pretty much the game's over right there. So flame sweep is our anti-ally. It's also another attack card if they do have things, um, like for instance, if they could give themselves at a fast activation speed, um, stealth or something like that. Sweep isn't gonna, is gonna be able to get around that because they're not going to tar be targeted with the attack. So the sweep would end up hitting everything, including them, which is great. So let's talk lastly for the main deck about the Crux package. So the list that we, give Jay we gave Jason in this tournament had three Spirit Blade Ascensions, it had four Spirit's Blessings, and it had four Spirit Blade Infusions. So, Pre-ban, this list was one that I have been working on and playing quite a bit and having a lot of success with it. Um, Infusion is still one heck of a card. Um, people, a lot of people don't even know about this card anymore that didn't play early on in the game, but Infusion used to just run rampant in this game. Um, back when, when you leveled up, it would untap your champion. So with Lorraine, you could swing, dungeon guide, level up, swing, and, and get tons of value out of these infusions. In this deck, we don't get the, this card costs two less to activate if your champion has dealt damage this turn very often. Uh, we don't get that portion, but the until end of turn target sword weapon gets plus three attack and on champion hit draw a card. We can utilize this in recollection to give one of our swords a huge damage boost and set up some really big kill turns. Um, Spirit's Blessing is that card I was telling you about. Galahad is our fifth Spirit's Blessing. In this deck, we can set up a ton of different combo kills with the multiple attack cards we have and just the swords we have. We also get to wake up our champ and draw a card when we bring this. So um, typically in this deck, you do end up with a lot of different swords on the board. So it's very easy to swing, get rid of a sword, spirits with when we spirit blessing to be able to swing again. We get to draw a card and wake up our champ. So super strong. Ascension is definitely not as powerful now that we do not have Avarice to abuse it with Cruxite. But in this deck, Spirit Blight Ascension, being able to pick up a Sword of Seeking and put down our Prismatic Edge, which then can ping away a blocker and let us swing through, sometimes is strong enough. Or being able to bounce our Prismatic Edge to kill our opponent for just doing three damage to them repeatedly. So it's still a great card, it's still powerful, we're just not abusing it to draw 20 cards in a turn anymore. 
Before I move to the sideboard, my buddy Isaac has a few words to say. Hey everyone, it's Isaac. And if you want to support us, get merch, or pre-order the next set from GA, then you should check out our website. Over on our website, you'll find stickers, t-shirts, playmats, and material deck sleeves, and the next set of Grand Archive for pre-order. So make sure to check that out. Also, if you like content, then you should check out our Patreon. Over there, we have an exclusive podcast series, extra gameplay videos, and articles written by us to help your competitive gameplay. In any case, if you like what we do here on YouTube, then don't forget to like and subscribe as it does help us out a lot. Thank you. Welcome back. So lastly, we are going to go over the sideboard that Jason used during our tournament. So first off, three copies of Immolation Trap. And yes, that is an Immolation Trap. It's a first head uh, art. It is the same card. Um, this, this card is a two drop assassin skill reaction. So it is an action, fast speed. We don't get the class bonus, which makes this free. But the big part that's important is the destroy target damaged ally. So utilizing this card, pre-recollection by bouncing a prismatic, doing three damage and then killing something. Maybe we retaliated with a hasty messenger, waited to the end of their turn and then emulation trapped that thing. But the big, the big thing we're trying to kill with this and why there's three of them in the board is the Majestic Spirit. That is a card that will give us a lot of grief and is hard to deal with. So emulation trap is kind of a quick fix to dealing with the Majestic Spirit. We play two more copies of Resolute Stand because aggro is a real thing. It's something that we have to respect. We have to be ready to defeat and resolute stand. A lot of times, like I said, in the main deck is gonna just give us that extra time we need to set up and hopefully race our opponent. Two copies of Veruk, Smoldering Spire. I mean, Veruk doesn't need much of an introduction. This card is a three drop unique domain that damage dealt by fire element sources you control can't be prevented. So when we're swinging with our face with a fire spirit, that is gonna be a fire element source. So against wind decks that are playing a ton of veiling breezes or just fog decks that are really trying to stop your damage from coming through, Veruk is a very, very powerful card. Um, if you're playing fire and you're trying to do damage, this deck probably makes it into your 80 cards. And the last card is just a Tithe Proclamation. Uh, Tithe, I think, is just has a ton of versatility. It's very strong against Rai, which is the real reason it's here. I, you know, it's not as scary anymore against Crux to have to have this guy in play or be the person who pops off first and slays the king, one of their dungeon guides, to get a Tithe out. Um, Avers is gone. So, you know, we're not seeing those ascension loops where people are drawing 10 plus cards in a turn. Um, we'll see where the format goes and how powerful Tithe Proclamation, you know, becomes as the meta, you know, evolves. But currently, I don't think I would be caught without a Tithe Proclamation in my 80. Um, just in case I do come across a deck that is drawing a ton of cards. This card, very, very powerful. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, this deck is one that's like near and dear to my heart. It, it is OG Grand Archive, the old days before a lot of the rule changes. It, it kind of had, I gained a lot of inspiration from early Grand Archive for this deck using the infusions, the spirits blessings, things like that. And honestly, this deck did well before the ban in a lot of testing, so I'm excited to see what it does post and see if it really can you know, hold its own weight to the meta and stay as a contender. Um, in our early, early tournament with ban list the day of, it was able to take it down, but I don't think that, obviously we built those decks overnight, we were half asleep for some of them, and this deck is tried and true. So I think this deck um, is exciting. If you're looking for something to try at your locals, especially something that might be a little bit easier to teach a newer player how to play. This deck is super, super solid and does a lot of fun interactions. So this is Terry signing off. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for stopping in.